Take three, I guess. You guys uh, might have enjoyed that last little tidbit. I was, I was, I had a hidden track playing, and I, I didn't even know it. I started recording, and then some heavy metal started blasting. But anyways, whatever. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between, to another episode of Books and Buds, where we discuss two of the greatest things on planet Earth, books and buds. Today we're going to be discussing my favorite novel by my favorite novelist, Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck. Now, he had a hell of a way of packing a punch in a short amount of words. Like, this is 135 words long, and he just hit every area for me. I mean, this was a story about uh, selfishness, um, charity, um, redemption, uh, people coming together that just, you know, you wouldn't normally see coming together, um, luck, fortune, and misfortune. It was just everything was in it, everything. Um, except love, maybe. I don't think there was much love in this one, but it was just fantastic. Before we get to the book, though, folks, this is about all we have left. We have a little bit of the sour <laughs> freedom for our patients and some Dr. Free and some sour bubble. Uh, I got a pound here that's going to one of our wholesalers of the last of the sour free. That's it. We're trimming down the uh, next room this weekend, and it's been crazy. Everybody is just stuck at home with this coronavirus with nothing to do but drink and smoke, I guess. But people got to have their medicine, so we're happy to provide it. it. It's just been absolutely outrageous, though. We can't grow it fast enough to keep up with the demand. So that's the news in the bud front. As far as John Steinbeck goes, let's just dive right into it, folks. This book, it's pretty much my favorite book for a reason. Um, it reminds me of a time when... See, I had a group of friends just after high school, and we were, we were tight. And we used to hang out at my parents' house. We had this loft upstairs above my parents' garage, and we used to party. We partied hard. You know, it was a bit selfish, but our, our, our enjoyment of each other, our friendship, you know, it just all came together, and we just bonded through smoking weed and having a cute couple beers. And my parents didn't have a problem with it too much as long as we were keeping the hell out of trouble. At least we weren't out causing trouble, you know, we were, we were just hanging out up there, drinking and smoking. We all went to work every day, you know, we did what we had to do. I was in college at the time. Well, that's sort of what this book reminded me of. So this guy, Danny, the whole book is revolves around him. I think it was his uncle, I don't remember exactly, it's been a few years since I read it, but he, he gets left two houses. It, it's really odd. And him and a whole bunch of his friends move into one of them. And, well, it's him and his buddy Pilon, or Pylon, I think it's Pylon, move into one of them. And all they want to do really is just have a place to drink because they were just mischievous types to begin with. They took, they were kind of drifters in the town. They took jobs here and there just to, just to buy more wine, basically. That's all they wanted to do was just get drunk. So they are just hanging out in Danny's house and another guy comes along into the fold and that's all he wants to do is just drink. And then they end up becoming kind of good buddies. They bond over their love for drinking, more or less. But they, they form one hell of a good bond. And they come up with this elaborate way to try to trick uh, another drifter in town who just kind of is homeless. He just lives with his dogs. They just know he's got money because he's constantly collecting money and asking for money and collecting cans and bottles and stuff like that. And they're just thinking about it. Like, this guy's got a lot of money. He can buy a lot of wine. Let's invite him to come live with us and we'll see if we can get it out of him. And in doing so, he becomes one of their good buddies. And they realize the reason he's saving all of his money is so he can buy a candle and put it in a church for one of his dogs that recently, just recently passed away. And he's just a sweet man. And they all become kind of sweet men in this pursuit of drinking and they what happens is their selfishness leads them to discover who they are and you know in discovering who each other you know who they are they, they want to help each other and so Danny gets a little depressed after a while because um, now he's got this shelter he's got this actual place to go every night he's kind of losing focus of, of who he is and he wants to be that troublemaker again who's out causing problems in the neighborhood and doing petty crimes and just getting drunk and passing out on the beach. So he does. Well, his friends just see this as like a, a cry for help, and that's exactly what they try doing. They they go out and they get a job, and they're working harder ever at their local canning factory. 
They're working harder than they've ever worked in their life, trying to save money to, to save their friend Danny. And it's just real interesting what they do. Well, it turns out he didn't really want to save it. He was just being happy. But anyways, they saved all their money, and they threw in the biggest and the best party that anyone could have thrown a friend before. And they just did it out of love. They did it for their buddy Danny. They were worried about him. So all these vagabonds, they... They selfishly get together just for the worst reasons possible, just to get drunk, just something stupid. And they actually form that tight of a bond where they just really want to see each other happy. And typical of most John Steinbeck books, this one ends in utter tragedy, folks. It's, it's terrible, it's sad, it's devastating, and I loved it. I just, I love how it's real life like that. And, and, and he usually ends his books there what, for in my opinion, probably so you can come up with your own ending because usually in life when something bad happens, that's when you can either let it destroy you or you can push through it and then your life gets better afterwards. So I always I always fill in the endings myself on what might have happened to all these folks myself. And I'm assuming they, they either got through it or some of them didn't. I can kind of guess which characters made it through and which ones didn't just based on the way he developed them throughout the novel. But that's John Steinbeck's talent. He's just wonderful. That's his style. The only one that I've read to this day, when I've read pretty much all of them. Well, almost all of them. There's a few I haven't read. The only one I think was Sweet Thursday that actually had a really sweet and nice ending. Out of the net, the man kind of leaves you hanging quite a bit, but I love it. It's a great style. It's all his own, and I can't complain, folks. Hey, I'm going to make this one real quick because, like I said, it's swamped. Got a lot of watering to do. My business partner, he can't handle it all himself, so I gotta shut my yap and I gotta get back to work. Guys, if I got if I give you any value from this video, click subscribe, like, share with your friends, whatever. Pick up this book and don't keep don't forget to keep an eye out for my own book, Corpse Lily, available for pre order this fall. Love you guys. You could have tuned into any book review station. You tune into this one, I love you for it. Catch you later.